Hi, this is Matthew Brickman with iMediate Inc. I want to talk to you this month about the percentage. I have occasionally been asked how many mediations do I typically conduct per month and what is my settlement rate? Answering the first part of this question is easy. I keep track of every single mediation I conduct and have every single agreement that I have ever created so that in the future, if any attorney or party needs a copy, I have it available for them at no charge. Where I have difficulty is answering the second part of this question, what is my settlement rate? Well, what does it matter? Who cares? And if so, why do you care? I am more concerned about the, my success rate than my settlement rate. Well, what's the difference? In order to answer this, you need to know one thing and only one thing. A mediator's first and only responsibility is to empower the parties to exercise self-determination. Well, what does this mean? It means that my first priority is to empower the parties to make their own decisions. They may make good decisions and they may make poor decisions, but my job is to give them a voice and create a platform so that they can be the decision maker in their case. Many parties choose to settle their cases in mediation and others choose to have a judge decide their issues. Many times the parties do want to settle, but the attorneys don't encourage them to settle because they give them a glimmer of a possible hope that they might get a better deal in court. So they decide to roll the dice and take their chances, not to mention that if they do settle in mediation, then the attorneys no longer get paid as the case is then over. There may be occasional times where a judge is absolutely necessary to interpret the law or an existing agreement or possibly order a party to comply with the law or an existing agreement, but for the most part, the parties have the ability to settle the case amongst themselves. As a mediator, I am more concerned with my success rate which is 100%. I base my success not on how many agreements I can get signed in mediation, but rather on the fact that every single person that I have ever mediated for was empowered and they exercised self-determination and chose their own fate. Many chose to settle their own issues in mediation and signed an agreement, and others knew the risks going forward and chose to still move forward and have a judge decide their fate in trial. Either way, 100% of the time I empowered the parties to exercise self-determination. So what about the settlement rate? I believe that the higher the settlement rate, the higher possibility exists for more coercion, manipulation, bully tactics, and intimidation on the part of the mediator, and less mediating and empowerment of the parties. Now, with that said, don't get me wrong. I would love every single couple and every mediation to settle and sign their own agreement so they don't have to go to trial and spend thousands of dollars and lose control of the decision-making process when it comes to their families and possessions. Some people believe that the more money you pay for a mediator, the better they are. I disagree with this. I'd rather go to a mediator that has conducted more mediations, maybe for a reasonable price, and mediation is their full-time profession, than go to a mediator that picks and chooses which cases to mediate only to keep their settlement percentage up. Mediators like this charge hundreds of dollars an hour and might only mediate a few cases per month because charging those kinds of prices, they don't have to work much. In the end, it is up to the parties to decide on who they want to conduct their mediation, and it is up to the parties to decide whether they want to settle their case in mediation and retain full control of the outcome, or go to trial and surrender all decision-making authority to the family court system. For more information about mediation, visit iChatMediation.com or call me at 877-822-1479 or locally at 561-262-9121.